Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Miniard. This is a kit in 135 scale which copies Panzer Kampfwagen 4 aus G. It's a last version which was also uh, assembled I would say on the transition period with aus H early and as you can see it comes from Nibelungenwerk production May June 1943 and it is quite interesting because basically we get two versions in one box and this is an interior kit in 135 scale so basically you will be able to assemble not only the external features but also everything what was inside this tank and that might be an interesting offer for models who are searching for such project and it should be already available we have a commercial sample here so it means you will get exactly the same number of the kit uh, 35333 so contents will be exactly the same and note that box art is quite nice we have tank depicted here obviously figures are not included and here you can see comparison with my hand next on the side we have some safety information also address of the manufacturer and qr code together with the barcode and here we have some safety devices and of course it's written that this is not a toy but I wonder who would think that this tank is a toy. So here on the opposite side you will find six marking options which are included into this kit. I would say they are somewhat similar as you can see color is uh, of the camouflage is approximately the same. But still there is some variety and of course six marking options is quite nice thing to have in a 135 scale kit. So now I'm going to open it. It's a top opening box and here is what we have inside. It's really tight package as you can see it's almost uh, I would say a level with the top edge of the box and everything is packed into one plastic bag and then on the bottom we have assembly manual as you can notice here. So obviously I'm going to open the uh, plastic bag which is sealed first and then we will continue with other elements which are included into this kit and it will be interesting to see what is actually copied in this release so just give me a moment in the meantime let me remind you that you can also support us with a small donation we have a special support dsv button on our website so it's a huge red button on the right side or right hand panel of the website and you will be the one deciding how much you will get for new photo and video equipment or maybe for the new kit. As you saw in the recent reviews we purchased some of the kits with your donations and that's really cool. I'm grateful for your help in that. So here you can see first thing is a small envelope with a mini art logo. It's quite heavy because here as usual we have P fret and as far as you can see there are two of them unpainted ones so just give me a second first of all I would like to show you this one so it is dedicated to external armor panels and here we have quite a nice thing which will be up to scale on your model and just to so show you the thickness as you can see there are I would say more or less good looking so it's just a matter of careful installation you'll be good to go and here we go on with a second P fret so here it is it is also unpainted but this one is dedicated not only to external elements but also to some interior features and as you can see some parts are really tiny so if I will bring it closer here you can see comparison with my fingertip so definitely you will have to work with tweezers it won't be possible to place it with bare fingers so be ready for that and do not underestimate this feature of the kit I mean um, everything all the tiny things are copied in this kit but you will have to spend some time in studying and painting them next we continue with a separate plastic bag which carries clear frame and decal sheet so here it is the clear frame so as you can see we have here various periscopes and also lenses for the tail lights and headlamps everything looks cool but just like in any other mini art kit we do not have any masks here so you have to cover everything with your own hands next we continue with the decals sheet so this one is printed in decograph printing quality is really nice and you can notice that we even have some dials for interior parts so definitely it will be handy and I think you won't encounter any issues here 
Next we start with the first grey plastic sprue and here we have various parts for the main hull so let's zoom out a bit yeah now you should be able to see that here we have large panels for the main hull we also have some parts for the main gun and you can see that everything looks cool note that this for example part of the main barrel it is molded as a single piece part so it means you won't have to assemble it as a two piece assembly and that's really cool because it will speed up the assembly process and of course make it easier to get a clean uh, I would say joint or clean assembly in this area of the kit next we continue with this gray plastic sprue so this one is dedicated to the turret parts note that the side hatches are molded separately so you can open them and i think in this kit uh, such feature will be handy because you have something to show inside the tank so it won't be just an emptiness inside and of course molding quality looks fine of course you also should be careful with these thin parts because they are somewhat tricky to uh, separate off the sprue so definitely be careful while cutting them off the frame next we continue with another gray plastic sprue this one is dedicated to the engine parts and again everything looks cool so maybe i will zoom in here because these parts are quite interesting to check closer so here you can see them of course you can also add some wires to the engine bay because it is not copied in the kit and i think actually assembly manual shows what you can do with your own let's say material if you have some spare metal wire or something else and that's really cool because it will give you an idea where you can add more features with i would say quite a few actions next we have a sealed plastic bag so here we have this special teeth for the tracks As you can see they will be just inserted from the side and you will see it further in the video review when we will be checking the assembly manual because they actually show the process there next we have two identical plastic frames these ones are dedicated to a mix of various parts so i will show you on the one because there is no need to show the same stuff again and again let's zoom in and here you can see that we have spare wheels road wheels we also have some parts for external features and again a lot of small plastic parts so be ready to install them with tweezers again and of course you will have to use the plastic saw because otherwise you might risk damaging them while cutting them with a plastic cutter so definitely try not to use the plastic cutter with such parts next we continue with some internal elements as you can see these are four panels again they look quite nice so it's just a uh, i would say easy installation part next we have sprue which is dedicated to the main gun as far as you can see so here i will have to zoom in a bit and you can see all the parts closer again molding quality looks fine so it might be a good idea to think how to expose all these things because it would be a shame just to enclose them in the turret and let's say leave it as it is next we continue with track parts so it would be strange to see why new tracks in mini art kit so as you can see here we have plastic track links and it might be a bit tedious to assemble them but the final result will be worth it so do not be lazy install them all and you will see that the final appearance of the model will only benefit from such addition next again we have two identical plastic frames which are carrying parts for the fighting compartment so here we have also ammo shells and as you can see various parts for the ammo racks so again everything looks cool and do not forget that for ammo racks you have to use PE parts as well okay next we have some parts for the main hull this is actually the top superstructure of the hull as you can see we have the front armor plate side armor plates and everything looks cool so attachment points are also thin enough so it's just a matter of careful separation and here you can see that it won't be a difficult task okay next we continue with two identical plastic frames 
which carry parts for the drivetrain. Here we have parts for the drive sprocket. So each drive sprocket should be glued out of two parts. And we also have some guiding tabs here, which will help you with the proper alignment of these elements together. So I don't think it will be a complex thing to align them between each other. And you might have noticed that here we have attachment points right on the teeth of these drive sprockets. So it means you won't have to waste your time trying to clean this uh, what is usually left from attachment points. The same applies for this drive sprocket, so as you can see exactly the same attachment point style. But I guess we will use only one type of these parts. So another one we will go into your spare parts. Next we continue with these bits for the external armor on the turret. We also have some minor elements for the main hull and everything looks cool. So we can just move on. Okay, so what is here? Again, some external ports. From what I can see, we have some bits for the exhaust, also for the lower hull features. And everything looks cool. We have spare trucks, we have clean molding quality here and it would be a shame not to apply some weathering on these parts because we have some pre-molded features and weathering will actually help to bring out these features. Okay, next we have a lot of spruce again of the same type. There are actually six spruce of this type. So here we have arm rounds. As you can see they are molded as a single piece parts and that's actually I would say a thing which might be discussable because we have uh, some others saying that they would rather prefer a single piece pre-molded uh, element and some others say that they like such style what you can see right now in the video so in my opinion this is a handy feature in case you plan to use these armor shells in your build because you don't have to use them all at once and of course it might be a bit tedious to paint them but it gives you a more options to replicate while building this kit. Next we continue with parts for the drivetrain. So there are four identical plastic sprues from what I can see. Okay. And here we have road wheels. You can see them right now. Road wheels are molded as a single piece parts, but quite an interesting thing is that maybe I'll bring it even closer like this. So you can see that we have some pre-molded features on the rubber tires. And this is something what you won't see that often even today in the modern plastic kits. So in my opinion, that's a really great job done by Miniard because it will benefit the final appearance of the model. And of course it would be a wise idea to bring out these features somehow. Next we have uh, several tracks molded like this, packed into the separate plastic bag. I guess they will be needed for this, for one of the camouflages in the kit. Next we continue with quite narrow plastic spruce, so I will show them all together. Here we have idlers, also we have tensioners, and another thing is the side skirt here which is molded as a single piece part. With it I can also note that it is detailed from the uh, let's say inner side as well which is really cool because it gives you a bit more realistic appearance. It's not just like uh, manufacturer molded everything what will be visible and say the work is done. They actually decided to mold everything what is present on the vehicle. The same applies to this side fender. As you can see we also have here a special frames for the external armor. That will be a bit tricky part to work on but I think it is doable. Next again we have some armor panels for the superstructure of the main hull. As you can see these are slightly different so I guess they will be needed for the different type of the tank because as you remember we can copy two versions of this tank. Okay. Next we continue with more internal parts here, so let's zoom out a bit. These ones will be used for the drivetrain and you can see the gearbox for example here. And again everything looks cool, this circle will be used for the turret. We have also a radio station, so that's an interior kit and that's why it's I would say not that much surprising to see these elements here, but they are nicely 
designed, nicely molded, so there is nothing to complain about. More engine parts here on this frame. Let's zoom in a bit. Again, a lot of small parts, so this kit is quite generous on the tiny bits. And as I said before, it would be a wise idea to work with the right tools, because otherwise you end up with a really difficult job to do. Next, we have this plastic sprue. Here I think let's zoom in again, take a closer look, because here we have more of the interior parts. Just to give you an idea of the size of these parts, here is comparison with my fingertip. So they're not that huge, even though this is a 135 scale kit. And I would recommend not to underestimate all this stuff, because I know some motherers who still try to install such parts with their bare fingers. It's not a really wise idea, so definitely do not try to do this. Next we have a plastic sprue with various Pioneer tools and also loops for the towing cable. As you can see everything looks cool and as far as I remember manufacturer actually gives you a option to copy the clamps with PE parts. You will see it in the assembly manual. And that's not all. We have one more plastic sprue with Pioneer tools. Here it is. Again, various axes, shovels, and various other parts. Okay. Next, we have bigger plastic frame. This one is obviously dedicated to hull parts and also to the turret. And main hatch on the turret is bolted separately and can be positioned open. Of course, it's a must have an interior kit because it will actually help to expose everything inside. Next, we continue with more small sprues. So here we have machine gun, also some parts for the turret. Here you can see them. Let's zoom in. And another interesting surprise, which is a feature of the Panzer IV kits from Miniart, as you can see, special assembly jig for the tracks. And it will be handy because it will speed up the assembly process. And that's definitely a better thing than just having to work with tracks with your bare hands. Next we have more engine parts here. So I would say engine is a kit on its own and as you can see it's uh, really detailed here. So definitely open the engine bay, try to expose it somehow or maybe make the engine bay cover removable so that this engine will not be hidden in the model and then everybody will just forget about it. Next we have the final grey plastic sprue. This one is dedicated to main hull ports. Let's zoom out a bit. So here we have side panels for the lower hull section. We also have some armor panels for the top hull section. Here is the rear armor wall and everything looks cool. Of course it is also detailed from uh, opposite side because it would be strange to have an interior kit with no features at all in the inner sides of these parts. And next we continue with, just give me a second. So here we have assembly manual. This one is printed in form of large brochure. I will close the lenses a bit so that it won't be that bright. Here we have also short list of the features for this kit. And straight away we have two marking options printed on the first two pages. Next we continue with the parts map. And as usual, Miniart does not show which parts will not be used, so be careful with that. Use the right elements, which will be necessary for assembly of your particular option or version of the tank which you will choose. The assembly process starts with the lower hull section. We actually take this floor panel and start assembling the interior on it. It will be quite an interesting thing because you will have to plan in advance what should be painted uh, before installation. There are some elements which can't be painted later, so definitely think through the whole process. Note that here we also have some parts where you have to use your own things. For example, here you have to use a metal wire with 11 millimeters thickness. Next we continue with the engine assembly. So as you can see there are several pages dedicated just only to the engine assembly. It will be a really <laughs> interesting thing to work on. Next we continue with the uh, drum brakes from what I can understand. And we start working on the opposite side of the hull. So basically you repeat the same stuff again. And here you join them together with the main hull floor, the lower armor panel, 
Here we install various parts for the radiator and also rear armor wall. So next we continue with more armor panels on the lower hull section. Also the side skirts, note that some uh, options or decisions they are dependent on the marking option you choose so be careful and pay attention to this. Of course you will have to drill some holes in some areas so that's also quite important thing to remember. Here you can see ammo shells being attached on this side skirts which is really interesting frankly speaking I didn't even know that they had it on the side skirts. Next we continue with more parts on the rear section. Here you can see also some a uh, few tank and some clamps installed here and there. We start assembling the superstructure for this tank, which is also glued out of separate panels. Of course, you can open all the hatches which are openable on the real tank, so that's also a cool feature to have. And of course, it will help you to expose the internals in this tank. As you can see, there are large panels on the engine bay, which are also uh, useful for showing the engine inside. Here you assemble tracks, uh, spare tracks, which will be placed on this glacis plate. And here you can see also the uh, another track assembly, which will be placed on the lower armor panel. Next, we continue with various pioneer tools. So here, as I said, you have to use the either version with pre-molded clamps or the PE clamps with a, let's say, clean version of the pioneer tool. Next, we have fire extinguisher and front mud guards. The same applies to this Pioneer tool, so it means you have two versions of the clamps. And here we start working on the suspension, so it, we assemble road wheels, suspension arms, and you will have to think through how to paint these road wheels because there are no painting templates whatsoever. We have to use 101 track for each side in order to assemble the track links. Then we install the special frame supports for the external armor panels. And finally we start working on the turret. So that's the step number 105 as you can see. And we just begin working on these turret parts. So you can imagine how many uh, steps you will have to do. How it is a bit difficult to work on this kit. So this is definitely not a beginner's kit as some others might think about it. And note that even this uh, rear box, storage box is openable. So it might be also handy for your diorama projects. We have several versions of the muzzle brake for the main gun. And here we install the armor panels. Again, there are several versions for open or closed version of the hatch, so definitely think through this moment as well. And final step 148, it means installation of the turret into the place and some P parts get attached in the area of the spare track wheels. We also have colors chart, we have another marking option here, two more and final one here. So six marking options in total, just to remind you. An overall kit looks like a really great project if you're brave enough to start such model. It should be already available and you can get it in Modelimex webshop. Of course, I'll be happy to hear your opinion about such a list. Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. If you like this video, press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!